Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and today I would like to talk about bypass capacitors, also known as decoupling capacitors, in particular how you use them to clean up power going to your chips. Suppose we're laying out a Eurorack module. So let me go in and group my MOTM standard stuff here, and we'll just delete all of that. Now, it's a good idea to have a couple of electrolytic capacitors. Here we're using 10 microfarad at the connector where the power comes into the board to clean up the power there. But you also want to clean up the power that's going into the chips at the chip. Let's say that our design uses a TL072, and I'm going to use the through-hole version. All right, so I'm going to plunk down my op amp here, and maybe we've got another one because it's a dual op amp. All right, now our chips need power. Sometimes students will forget to power their chips. So I'm going to use the very unintuitively named invoke command and invoke the power supply pins for this chip. So that makes the power appear. All right, so let me copy my V plus symbol up here to have positive power, and I'll copy my V minus symbol to have negative power. All right, so we have our bipolar power supply for the chip. Now, if you set things up right, you can actually make these power connections implicitly, but I think that's a bad idea. I think it's always better to have your power connections explicit on the schematic. Let's see, let me squoosh the power connections out a bit. So I'll squoosh this one here, and I'll squoosh this one down here. All right, so for each of the power connections on each of your chips, you want to have a 0.1 microfarad capacitor going from that power connection to ground at the power pin of the chip. So I have a 0.1 microfarad capacitor here, and I have one here, and these are both going from the power pin to ground. So I'm going to need a couple of grounds here. I like to write something like 0.1 microfarad as 0 mu 1. Here I'm using u for mu. I like to take the unit and use that in place of the decimal point so that the decimal point doesn't get lost. So for chips that need a bipolar supply, you'll have two bypass capacitors per chip. Of course, if your chip only needs a single-sided supply, you'll just have one bypass capacitor. So the role of the capacitors is to both clean up power going into the chip and also deal with any gunk being created by the chip. If the chip is misbehaving a bit and is throwing some gunk onto the power line, this will swallow it up and help protect the rest of the circuit. Now, this is just general circuit design hygiene. When I'm breadboarding a circuit, I typically don't bother with these. I've used 0.1 microfarad as a typical nominal value. Your data sheet may tell you to use something else, in which case you should do what the data sheet tells you. Now, I don't actually like this particular schematic style. I think it clutters up the schematic. It makes it difficult to follow the actual logic of the circuit. And I don't mean logic in terms of AND gates and OR gates. I mean how the circuit is operating. Let me show you what I like to do. So let me get rid of these wires here and these wires here. And actually, I'm going to get rid of the power connections here. And let me get rid of the grounds here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bypass capacitors, and I'm going to stick them up here near the power connector. Now, I'm doing this on the schematic. On the PCB, these capacitors should still go close to the power pins of the chip. Let's see. Let me put this one up here. Maybe I'll move this label here and move this label here. Okay, this is kind of ugly. You can clean this up if you want. The main thing I'm going to do here now is take this power connector here for the chip and connect it like this. So I'll connect this here, and I'll connect this here. So I've taken the powering of the chip and moved it away from the main part of the schematic. Now, this often confuses students. They'll see me take a bunch of bypass capacitors and just line them up in a row, and a bunch of these power pin setups and line them up in a row. And they'll think that all of these capacitors should just be kind of in a massive capacitor bank on one side of the board. No, no, no. These should go 
by their appropriate chips on the PCB. So let's switch to the board layout. Yes, let's create a board. Okay, here I have my chip. Let me move capacitor one into the right zone here. And I'll move capacitor C2 into the right zone here. Let's see. Let's use the rat's nest command to see what's connecting where. Okay, I'll put this here. And let me double check on that. Ah, I should flip this around. All right. So let me zoom in here. All right, let me change the width here to something like 32. There we go. Aha. And then you would connect the other side here to ground. Now, if you have the power pins near the edge of the chip like this, you might also put your capacitors like this if you wanted, or sometimes, depending on what I'm doing, I'll even put them here, put that one there, and then I'll put this one over here. If you have something like a TL074 where they're metal, then I really just like to have parts coming out the side of the chip like this. Again, bypassing the power at the power pins. Now, these capacitors don't need to be silver mica or polystyrene or polypropylene or C0G or anything fancy like that. Dave Brown of ModularSynthesis.com recommends this part number for Mouser, so let's go check that out. Let's see, MLCC and uh, Z5U. Okay, nothing fancy.